So at the beginning of 2023, everyone was saying there was going to be a London housing crash, including City AM reporting that London house prices, how bad would the crash be in 2023 recession? And now in the month of July, we have Bloomberg saying it's summer and London's top end property market is sinking. But on the other end, we have City AM reporting that the super rich are back in prime London. With rising mortgage rates and falling house prices don't appear to be deterring the super rich. And towards the end of this video, I want to share with you exactly if you're a buyer or an investor, why this year may be the right time for you to buy a property in prime London. But before we go there, let me just share with you the insights and the data that you need to make an informed decision. So this may surprise some of you, especially those who thought there was going to be a property crash in London 2023. However, there has been a price growth according to Longrest for the quarter two of 2023. Ever so slightly, but there was one. And for annual growth, there was a 1.4% compared to the 0.2% quarterly growth. And when we look at transaction levels, there has been a fall there. In fact, it's been a whopping 20% annual change. And of course, if we look at pre-pandemic levels, I always like to look at this because the pandemic has, of course, distorted the market, but it's pretty much in line with pre-pandemic levels. Spring just simply did not come in in comparison this year to last year, 2022. So the outlook for the rest of the year 2023 looks uncertain and could be good or bad depending whether you're buying or are selling the current market. The reality is that full through rates and also price reductions are on the rise. If you compare the first half of this year compared to 2022, it's up just above 2%. However, if we compare this to the pre-pandemic average, it's up by almost 50%. And the number of price reductions also increased compared this year to last year, 28% and above. And by contrast, the average discount and proportion of sold property that had been reduced has fell back slightly from last quarter, suggesting that vendors have been more realistic on pricing. So the top end of the market, meaning 5 million plus sales volume was down by 18% this half compared to 2022. There were increases in new instructions of 20% plus fall throughs of 27%, price reductions are almost 100%, that's 96% on the same basis. This now appears to be more of a buyer's market with around about 20% more stock for sale at the end of June compared to the start of the year. There are buyers out there that are still very nervous. Of course, there have been 13 interest rates rises in succession, and we still don't know whether we're gonna see the peak of that towards the end of this year. If we look at sellers on the other end, there may be other pressures such as uh, their mortgage package is coming to an end and the interest rates going up the roof. So they may have a little bit more pressure and urgency in selling now. If you live in prime London and you're seeing something different to what I'm sharing here in this video, please feel free to share your comment and tell me I'm wrong. And broken down by property type, we can see that the data tells us that when it comes to flats and houses, it's pretty much equal, which of course is very different during the pandemic when houses were so popular and so much in demand. And then that shifted to apartments. And relative to 2017 and 2019 averages, transaction levels for both are actually slightly up. There's only a small difference, which is flats seem to be having a bigger fall through rate than houses, but we believe that this is more down to building regulations and leases rather than the actual buyers. And the trend for pricing is similar, with flats outperforming the houses ever so slightly, flats at 2.2% and houses at 1.6%. If you're a seller or buyer in the current property market in London, share with me your experience. Let me know your pains or perhaps your gains in the current market. As pointed out earlier, sales across prime London is down by 20% compared to 2022. If we look at this from a sub-market perspective, we can see central London is down by 18%, inner prime London by 16 and fringe is down by 24%. Some neighbourhoods in prime London are defying this trend, with Mayfair and St James being the best performers in central London, with an annual increase in transactions of 3.6%. From prime to inner London, Marylebone has seen the 21% rise and while all areas in Prime Fringe are down, Basewater and Maidervale has seen the smallest fall of 11.3%. If you want a more in-depth analysis of a neighbourhood, make sure you reach out to us and book a call with me. And longer term changes show a different pattern. 
with transaction volumes compared to 2017 and 2019 average up the most in Chelsea 35% and yet Maidervale and Bayswater are pretty much the same at that 35%. Only the fringe locations of Battersea, Clapham and Wandsworth, Hammersmith and Brook Green, Chiswick, North Kensington and Vauxhall, Nine Elms, Borough of Kennington have seen falls in activity over the same time scale. And with so many different messages coming from different media outlets, it'll be interesting to find out if you're in the current prime London property market, what are you experiencing? Share your comments below. So if you're a cash buyer, whether it's a home or you're an investor, this may be the right time for you to buy. Firstly, you've got more stock than ever before. Remember, London typically has a stock problem. Right now, there's a lot to choose from. Secondly, there are sellers out there that really need to sell. Their mortgage packages have come to an end and their mortgage interest rates are through the roof. Thirdly, if you're an investor out there, I've never seen yields in London like this before for a very long time. As ever, my team and I were always happy to help with anything in prime London property. 